Well, thank you. I'm very happy to be here. You know, I wake up every morning about 5 o'clock, and by 5.30, I'm on the road running the first of about three or four miles. So a 9 o'clock start is kind of, <laughs> it's not as early as you think. Uh, but it is great to be here. Uh, part of my job is I'm responsible for the Army's transition program. Uh, and the, the transition program really is about taking soldiers as they leave active duty and, and help them integrate or reintegrate back into society. Now, when I think of transition, I think back to my dad. In 19, this is a picture of my dad. When he was 17 years old, right before he deployed to the Pacific Theater and served in World War II for a little over two years, he came back to San Francisco on a ship on the 17th of December of 1945. 16 days later, after a train ride, he got out of the Army on the 2nd of January at Camp Atterbury, Indiana. He was given $50 and a train ticket, and they thanked him for his service. Probably not the right way to do it. So now we have an Army of volunteers. For the first, we've always had volunteers in our Army, but for the last 40 years, we've had an all-volunteer force. And I will tell you that what you see is these kind of great soldiers that you'll see in some of these pictures, uh, just absolutely fantastic. 130,000 soldiers will leave the Army every year. Two-thirds of those soldiers were active duty, regular Army soldiers, and they'll go back and, for the most part, go into the civilian community. Uh, a third of those soldiers will, will stay were National Guard or Army Reserve, and in the end, they'll go back to their old jobs if they had a job. Uh, every one of those soldiers, in my view, is a hero. They don't have to have been deployed. They don't have to have been wounded. They just have to have served. And only 1% of those that are or of the age serve in our, in our country. And only 3 in 10 are eligible uh, to, to serve. But they all serve because of this, the Constitution. They all raise their hand and swear an oath to an idea, and they do it in a time of war. And they've done it for the last 12 years without, without a blink. Every single one of them do it without a blink. So as I thought about my dad in 1946, then I tried, and I'm responsible for transition, it became a little bit more personal when my son-in-law decided to get out of the Army. So that's my son-in-law and my daughter, and he decided to get out of the Army. I was concerned that he would get out of the Army and have nowhere to go and come back and bring my daughter home. So I didn't want that to happen. <laughs> and so that's why we spend an awful lot of time, that's not the only reason, but it's part of the reason, we spend an awful lot of time and effort trying to take care of of our soldiers. Because let me tell you about our soldiers. They're not all trigger pullers. They're not all infantrymen or armor crewmen. We have soldiers in over 350 military occupational specialties. That's different jobs. From armor crewmen to x-ray technicians to doctors to lawyers to everything in between. They're just tremendous, tremendous people. So. When you think about the reason we should hire a veteran, it's not out of obligation. It's a smart business decision. Because although it may make you feel good to hire a soldier, sailor, airman, or marine, and I, and I have to say, since today is the Marine's birthday, happy birthday to all former Marines and current Marines. But it's smart. Because what you get with a soldier is someone who is drug-free, disciplined, Tested in leadership, tested in team building, physically fit, smarter than the average person. It's not in all cases, but smarter than the average person. And they're, they're just absolutely wonderful people. You see right here, Clint Romache, when he received the Medal of Honor. Uh, and the president gave uh, the Medal of Honor. He was a cavalry scout. So that makes him, he was an armor, armor NCO, non-commissioned officer and he did tremendous things and decided to transition from the Army. 
Well, there's not a lot of direct correlation for armor crewmen when they leave the Army. I mean, I, you walk around New York, you can't find too many armor crewmen. But what you can find is someone with great skills. So when he got out, he went to uh, North Dakota and then ended up in Minot, North Dakota, where he, his first job was driving a truck because he had that skill. Well, they soon found out that he had more than that. And so then he was in charge of a number of trucks. And then they said, no, you're better than that. You've got all these skills. And so what they made him was a safety supervisor, and he's doing that today. And there you can see, you can see the pictures of them, he and his wife. So he was a soldier, and now he's a soldier for life. These soldiers that you see here have got great experience. They spent their entire life and their entire training learning about how to take care of people, how to solve problems all the way. So that's my main message to you today is that these soldiers are just wonderful people. They deserve to be brought back into society, to, to be given all the things that they need uh, and so that they can help you. And, and uh, in addition, they can uh, be reintegrated. See, because you can see from the pictures that, that we're showing up here that they are, they do everything uh, that there is out there. So for 31 years, or more than 31, if you look at this, this note from George Washington, the willingness with which our young people will, are likely to serve in the future no matter, is proportional to how the veterans are being treated. And when you think about that with an all-volunteer army, those words from 1781 are as good today as they were in 1781. Because being a soldier for life, being a Marine for life, a Coast Guardsman for life, an Airman for life, it is something that we just can't just let go. We have to take care of them. So I will tell you that in over 31 years of service, where I've worn the cloth of the nation and have been honored to, I have always had my back in peace and war. When I look at a soldier, I look at that name tag, and I look on the other side where it says U.S. Army, and I don't have to get their resume. I don't have to get anything. I know by looking at them that they have the credentials, they have everything that is necessary, and they are absolutely the kind of person that I want to hire. It's not our job in the Army to hire them, but it's to prepare them so that they can go back into society and, as, as was talked about earlier, take on the next mission. So, as I said, for over 31, almost 32 years, they've had my back. And I will tell you, I've, I've got their six, and I hope you'll have their six as well. So again, thank you so much to Google. Thank you so much to everyone here, uh, both here live and the, we'll see us later for all that you do for our veterans and our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. Thank you so much. God bless you.